Hello, I'm so glad that you've joined us today as we start what I think is going to be a very exciting and informative series. Have you ever wondered why you act the way you do? Or ever wondered why everyone in your family seems to have different characteristics from you? Well, a lot of it can probably be explained by birth order, having to do with where you were born in the family, where your parents were born in their family. And this is a subject that we're going to be studying throughout this series. And the reason has to do with birth order affects us, whether you're a firstborn, secondborn, the middle child, the baby, or even the only. Birth order does make a difference. Now, let's look at some of the characteristics real quickly of the firstborn. The firstborn is the oldest of the family, and he's the leader unless he is dethroned by the secondborn, or maybe there's some other reason that would cause that. And he's usually either the oldest in the family or the oldest of his sex. Now, the firstborn, he's a perfectionist, reliable, well-organized. He's contentious and hard-driving. The natural leader can be a little bit critical, serious, logical, and does not want surprises. He's one of those that will sign up for the no surprise deal. Follows all rules and regulations and expects you to do it as well if you're not a firstborn. Well, how about the secondborn? Secondborn, they're the ones that come in right after number one, so they're like Avis. They try harder. Of all the siblings or the sex, depending on where they are, there'll be number two of the same sex or number two of the siblings. And they're going to be the opposite of number one. But being that makes them also full of contradictions sometimes. Because the second born could be compromising and a mediator because they want to please, or they could be the maverick, trying to get ahead and maybe very secretive in how they do it. They're diplomatic. They want to avoid conflict, but they're independent. They are extremely loyal to peers, and they're unspoiled, and they stick to their commitments. And because of that, these are the ones that are extra motivated to make their marriages work, regardless of the circumstances. Then we have the middle child. Now, the middle child is really hard to define. And because the middle child could be the second between one and three, or they could be the fifth of six kids. We just know that they're going to fall somewhere between the first and the last. And that makes it really hard to define. And sometimes they just have a habit of just blending in. They're the ones that get the least notice sometimes. They're the ones often with the fewest pictures in the family album. And they have a very relaxed approach to life. They learn to negotiate. And they hate confrontation. They can be trusted with your secrets and... You know, they have such a pleasing personality that there's a, they just have a lot of friends. But at the same time, they can be very stubborn and not one you want to get involved with when they've been a little bit riled. But because the second and the middle are so much alike, many of the characteristics of it can be applied to each. And as we go through the study on birth orders, Nick, um, in a couple of weeks, we'll be looking at both the middle and the second child together. Now we move on to the last born of the baby. You know, this is one that will never be displaced by a newborn. They're the last born, or there is such a large gap between them and the next born that the next born, after a long period of time, would be considered all over again the first born. These are the happiest of all, and they love social interaction. They're charming, 
They're attention seekers. They're tenacious. Mm -hmm. They know what they want and how to get it. They're people persons. They, oh, make wonderful, wonderful salespersons because they can out-talk everyone. They're affectionate. And while the firstborn does want no surprises, oh, a baby loves surprises. They're the family comedian, and they receive less discipline of all the kids in the family, and as adults, they dispense less discipline to their kids. And then we have the only child. This Some people call the this one who is the only child in the family the lonely special, or some say they might be the jewel of the Nile. There's no other sibling. Or if there is, there's been a gap of maybe seven to 10 years, so either this one or the next one is a surprise. So and that makes this one still a psychological only. The only child is a little adult by the age seven. They're very thorough. They're high achievers, self-motivated, cautious. They can't bear to fail. They have high expectations for themselves and everyone else around them. And they're most comfortable with people who are either older or younger. Now, I just gave you an overview of all the birth orders, but we need to remember that when we're talking about birth orders, all of these general qualities are only indicators. They are not rules. So you might say, as you listen to that, well, you know, I, I'm a middle child and that didn't fit me, or I'm the only or the baby. You know, these are only indicators. Each birth order tends to have its unique characteristics with strengths and weaknesses. But birth order can have discrepancies because of many different things. The sex and the spacing of a child. Let's say the first and second born are both males. Well, that's going to be a lot different than if the first born was a female and the second born was a male. You're going to see a big difference there in the second born. Or maybe you have twins, and the twins come along at a at three and four, but basically those two by themselves will have a first and second. Maybe it's a blended family. And the firstborn will always be a firstborn, and so when you get first, when you try to mix the families, there's gonna be a lot of competition. Perhaps there's been a death in the family. This will automatically move everyone's birth order up, and many times, the children are not ready for that. And then there's times that the birth order just doesn't fit. And that's because kids are kids and children are going to be children no matter what happens. Well, the birth order theory was first thought about or first introduced way back in 1908 by Alfred Adler. And he was an Australian medical doctor and psychotherapist. He was also a middle child. And so that caused him to want to know why he was different. And Catherine Boehm in the book, Everyone, Everything You Need to Know About the Birth Order, says everyone who follows Adler's theory believes that birth order can influence not only our self-esteem, but the rules you take in life, how happy or successful you are, and can even influence who you choose to marry. Well, with so many variables in the birth order theory, and because it was introduced by a secular psychotherapist, you might think, why do we want to study that? Well, let me tell you. We want to study it because God created us, and he designed us, and birth order was his original idea. We are all uniquely made and created. Psalms 139 verses 13 and 14 says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows 
all well. So as we go through this next few weeks, we're going to look at people from the Bible and see how their lives match up with the birth order and see what we can learn about it. We're going to be looking at firstborn like Aaron, Martha, the elder brother, the secondborns, Jacob, the prodigal son, and Andrew. Also, a couple of middles, Mary and Miriam, the lastborn, David and Benjamin and Gideon, and the onlys, John the Baptist, Esther, and Isaac. But we're going to also going to think about some others because the relationships you have in your family are the most important relationships that you'll ever have throughout your life. And what happens there will follow you throughout your life. And what we see demonstrated in Bible families, we can see carried out in the families today. For example, we see Moses. He was born the baby of his family, one of three, but he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, which made him an only adopted child. That really caused things to change up in his life. And yet, even in older years, he still called on Aaron, his older brother, for help. Samuel, he was also raised as an only, but he was born the first. And so we're going to see how he... Didn't change that much, but he developed qualities of both the only and the firstborn. Sibling rivalry. Oh, does that ever go on today? And we see it very clearly between the first and secondborns. Cain and Abel, first two brothers in the Bible. And did they ever not get along? Esau and Jacob were twins. There was a lot of rivalry there. And, you know, it's not just the first and second, but how about even the oldest and the youngest? That's what happened with Eliab and David. So Manasseh and Marion, and Manasseh and Ephraim, you know, these two brothers were just a couple of years apart. But when they were still young children, their birth order blessing was switched. And that's something that followed them throughout their life. So we can see how important the birth order is. And next week, we're going to be looking at the qualities and zeroing in on the first one. But as we go through this series over the next four weeks, there's something we need to remember. Remember that the most important person for you to ever understand is you. So just pray that as you go, as we go through this session, that God will open your eyes and you'll be able to see yourself. And you'll realize, you know, maybe some blind spots are going to be revealed, but they're revealed so that you can change and that you won't be blind in that spot any longer. Or also know, hey, you've got a lot of wonderful qualities because God created you. And you're special because everything God does is good and good.